Failure of big banks is spreading across the US like an infectious disease. It has been about a month since the failure of Silicon Valley Bank rocked the American banking industry. And now it seems another major US bank could be heading down the same road. First Republic, a major American bank by the end of 2022, had assets worth $213 billion, of which about $167 billion were loans and $32 billion were bonds. Deposits of $176 billion, short-term borrowing of $7 billion, and long-term borrowing of $9 billion were used to finance it. The bank also had high-quality capital of $18 billion. But the company had lost $102 billion of its initial deposits by the end of the first quarter, which was replaced by a sizable amount of short-term borrowing, which reached $80 billion by the end of first quarter, and $30 billion in sympathy deposits from six major banks that put money with the organization to help it survive. Actions that led to this point include the large loans made by First Republic during the low interest rate period, including through affordable mortgages. According to an economist report, the bank lent $6 million to Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg for his house, who obtained it on a 30-year mortgage at a 1.05% interest rate. As interest rates increased, the value of these loans decreased drastically. The second mistake which has put First Republic Bank in this position includes when many wealthy clients agreed to transfer their deposits to the bank as part of the transaction. These clients, who had significant uninsured sums, have since left. First Republic has turned to short-term finance in the absence of affordable deposit financing, with the Federal Reserve and the Federal Home Loan Banks, another government-backed lender, providing the majority of the loans at market rates. Unless depositors choose to return, First Republic has no visible way out. Due to the collapse in net interest margins, it cannot earn its way out. Selling assets also wouldn't be helpful. On April 25th, share price of the bank fell by 50%. Its market value is just $1.2 billion now, down from $23 billion in January. And that suggests a wind down in the Silicon Valley Bank fashion. According to reports, First Republic is already in talks with regulators, seeking a way out. But the worries for the US regulators don't end there. The question they are likely to be struggling with at this point, what kind of a domino effect will this lead to? Not should it happen, but when it happens.